Our next guest is interested in stocks that benefit from rate cuts. Tony Dwyer is the chief market strategist at Canaccord Genuity. It's great to see you here on set, Tony. It's great Good to day. be here, Mel. It's great to see you guys. So here's the first question, though. Rate cuts happen in the backdrop of the economy weakening? Or is it, is it because, I mean, what, what happens in so it, it, it is weakening in the employment okay. data. And I think something that one of the most uh, aggressive topics that I talk to clients about is how bad the incoming data is. So I'm going to take you a little bit in the weeds here. There's something called the initiation survey rate. It's when I reach out to you and say, how many people do you fire? How many people do you hire? I'm the BLS. You're the company. Before the pandemic, 70 percent of the companies would get back to the Bureau of Labor Statistics and say, we laid off this many people or we hired this many people. Last in January was 27 percent. So we're getting employment data. We got 167,000 job negative revision in the last payroll employment report. And it's not that they're manipulating the data. The conspiracy theorists go bananas with this stuff. It's really that they don't have a good collection mechanism. So the revisions are significant, and most of them have been negative, Mel. Mm -hmm. So I think that some of the Lululemon, some of the, the consumer hits that have happened. If you looked at Lululemon a month ago, you're, you know, it's oh, up and to the right. Yep. You, you know, it's, it's parabolic. It's like everything else. And if you look at the Russell 2000 a week ago last Wednesday, it's down for the year. So I think it's just a little bit of perspective on, on the economy slowing and what it might mean for rates okay. and the consumer. So, so what benefits in that environment where the economy is weakening and we do have rate cuts? Well, our, our focus now is those rate cuts are what you need. You need to kill the zombie. Right? And the zombie is an economy that you're waiting for it because of the inversion of the yield curve and the higher interest rates to slow down enough to go into recession. Until something happens with the Fed and lower rates, it's going to be very hard to disprove that you can eventually go into a recession because you normally have. Um, our view is that the, the vast, all of the earnings growth from 2023 was the MAG-7. According to our earnings wizard, L LSEG, it literally was a negative number for earnings growth last year, X the MAG-7. It's same for this quarter. It'd be a negative number. As we go into the end of the year and into next year, it's much more even. So that's where we're calling for the broadening of the market. It's coming from a broadening of the earnings growth participation. It's not just the MAG-7. So if you get lower inflation and lower interest rates and start to get scared about the unemployment rate going up, that sets the stage for that real early cycle recovery we can get in those areas that benefit from lower rates. So what if you get a little lower employment, but really not a lot of relief on the cuts? Let's say you get one. Does that change your outlook? It would. It, where I'll be wrong is if rates stay here or, or actually go up. Um, I, I find it very hard to believe that that's going to happen, Kara. Like, if you think about when rates were going up, it was the end of the higher in inflation where they did four rate hikes of 75 basis points in a clip to slow it down. The trajectory of the core PCE, which we get tomorrow, is exactly the opposite right now. So if it goes down a little bit more and it stays on this trajectory, you get a, a continued move up in the unemployment rate. You get a continued move down in the inflation rate. Karen, I can't imagine they're going to go 25 basis points after going from zero to 550. They're going to go, oh, 25 is enough. We're good. Zero. So zero, that's Yeah, yeah. So call it two to five. I, you know, we're that five and a quarter is the upper end. Maybe it comes to four. That's enough to really kickstart. That happens with weaker employment. That happens with weaker spending. And that's, I'm not saying they have to go back to zero, but they have to be more aggressive to re and positive, it reinvert in whatever they do to Great. get the curve back to normal. So we've gone from higher for longer, right? That was the mantra. And of course, the exact opposite happened. Rates dropped from five to three, eight. Then at three, eight, consensus was there'll be six cuts, seven cuts. That's yep. all off the table. Now it's one, maybe none. What if there is, just as you're implying, nothing? They just stay pat and don't stand pat. It's a, think by that? the way, it's a, it was a political term back in 1896 Perfect. referring to patents, but it's still a poker term. We should keep moving. Remember, so, they were only going to do three hikes. Right, three hikes. So three and, hikes and, and the then three cuts. But let's say they actually just somehow keep juggling the ball and do nothing. Do you think that is Goldilocks or that's a problem? I, I think that creates a bigger recession. Bigger recession. Problem. Yep. I think the Fed needs to get, I'm kind of on Steve's camp, the Fed needs to get aggressive here. It, remember, when inflation was moving up and spiking like it's moving down now, they were telling us they were only going to do three hikes. We're good after three hikes. That's the peak rate. Not so much. So if you get weaker employment, the whole picture here for the economy is we're at full employment. 
Manufacturing's been in a recession for the better part of two years. Non-res construction's but, turning over, so. Really quick, because I know we don't have a lot of time left, but I heard you say zombie about our, refer to our economy in zombie terms. And yet we, we also have a dynamic also out there for markets where financial conditions are out of control. Out of control, so without the, Fed movement. None of this seems to make sense, and yet you think the Fed hasn't moved fast enough, and I think they lit the market on fire right. last week. Oh, they absolutely lit the market on fire. By staying with three, remember, they revised the growth and inflation up, but stayed with three cuts. He also said we're at the peak of the cycle in terms of rates. That was not gray. So I'm not saying that we go into a service-based recession and the market collapses. There is no history I can find with this kind of momentum that calls for market collapse. At this point, when you're this overbought and this extreme to the upside, you just want to wait for a better opportunity. In our view, that comes with this worsening employment data that cuts rates. You worry about the economy. That's when I want to go in, not, not levered long at, right. you know, after the kind of rates that we've been to, or the kind of moving stocks we've been talking about.